WebSocket is a cross-platform communication protocol for communication between two computers. And one of them may be a server and a client. And the thing that distinguishes a server is that it has something called an API and it listens for requests and then returns information to the client. Now a server in this architecture with WebSockets can also function as a client and just send a message to a client as well. So it enables this bi-directional communication between two computers. Now, one of the things that's really nice about uh, WebSockets is that it functions over TCP transmission. Um, let's see, TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. Okay, it's a standard for internet communication. And so you can write these servers and clients in languages such as JavaScript, in PHP, and Python, and many more. So it's a very nice protocol for setting up these APIs that allow you to communicate in many different architectures and environments um, to send and receive information. So this is also uh, kind of the underlying layer for some of the other uh, things that we talked about like MQTT, uh, which is designed for Internet of Things. We also have uh, things like Modbus uh, protocols or OPC UA. All right, so those are a little bit more abstracted, higher level, and they're built for things like process control and automation. Now, when we go to WebSockets, this is just a a very base level package that allows you to configure it however you'd like. So it gives you more flexibility, uh, but there's just a little bit more configuration that you need to uh, use to set one of these up. All right, so we're gonna set up uh, just a server and a client today. So the first file is gonna be the server that we review, and the second one is going to be a client. And let's just go ahead with uh, just a simple application of this server. First thing we're gonna do is import async IO and WebSockets. Now we're gonna define a hello with our WebSocket input, and we're going to await a name that we receive on this server. All right, we'll print the server receive this name, and then it'll return hello with the name. So it's going to await um, and then we do WebSocket send with this greeting right here. All right, then we're gonna say uh, server sent greeting and then we'll say async, uh, def we'll define a new function main and we'll serve the WebSocket, okay, with this function hello We'll serve it on localhost with port 8765. That's a standard port for WebSockets. And then we'll call this await async IO future, which just helps it run forever and always listen for uh, a name and then return the greeting. And then if I'm the main program, okay, so if I'm calling this program, um, as a function, then I can call these other functions, but this enables me, if I've run this program, if it's the main, then I'm gonna run async IO, okay? And uh, we'll run this main um, server to run it forever. All right, so there's our server. Next, we're gonna establish a client, and the client is gonna be able to send its name and then listen for the response from the server. So again, we'll import async IO and WebSockets. And we'll define hello. Now, this is the, um, this is the WebSocket localhost on port 8765. That's gonna be the, uh, where we connect to. Okay, so we're gonna do WebSockets.connect. And then we'll ask, uh, what's your name to the user? 
All right, and then we'll send that to the server. Okay, so use the WebSocket to send it to that server, and we'll print out the client sent the name, and then we're gonna wait for the greeting to come back, and then we'll print uh, the, what was received. And there's our hello. All right, so let's go ahead and run both of these. I'm gonna just start a new command prompt here. Okay, and let's go ahead and start our server with one and then our client with another. Okay, so server is here on the left and then client will be here on the right. Let me go ahead and just change to my desktop and then I'm gonna say Python and then this is gonna be server.py. You know, there's no message here because it hasn't received any greeting yet. And then I'm gonna also change directory to my desktop and then start the client. All right, what's your name? All right, so client sent John and client received hello John and the server received uh, John and it sent hello John. So you can see these operate. Okay, and if I run this again, and let's say my name is Susan. Okay, it looked like the server uh, stopped here um, and did not uh, send that. Okay, it looked like it was a uh, connection. Oh, I needed to do control um, C to uh, break that execution and then it printed the next one. Okay, so let me just run that again. Okay, there's the server there's the client and if I do uh, Susan then you can see that and if I run it again and I do Bill okay so there it goes I don't know why it didn't work the first time okay Sam uh, okay so there it goes I've got it uh, running now and it's sending names and then receiving those uh, back okay so um, all right, so that is a kind of a simple case. Let's go ahead and do a, a more complicated one now. And this is going to be an exercise for you to try if you'd like, and then I'll show you my solution to it. All right, so you often have, uh, you know, maybe a, a timing program or maybe a buzzer beater, okay, where two people are sitting across from each other and they have their hands ready to press a buzzer to maybe answer a question. All right, there's one buzzer with a contestant and another buzzer. So when the question is asked, they can both hit the buzzer. And what we wanna do is create a program that has a server and these are, this is gonna be client one and client two. And when they hit the buzzer, it's going to send a message to the server that the buzzer was pressed. And if they're the first one to hit the button, then we want the server to record that and then also send back that they are first place. All right, so let's say the client two is just a little bit slower. And they press their button next. We want the server to be able to record their time and how much after client one, it received their request. And then send back, um, you know, you uh, responded and then X seconds afterwards. So maybe that's five seconds or 0.1 seconds after client one. So let's go ahead and create this program and just see if we can um, do this with the WebSockets to be able to communicate between the clients and the server and set both of those up. So let's go ahead and just set up the buzzer server first of all. Okay, we're gonna import async IO, WebSockets as well and we'll create an empty list to store the clients. So we don't know how many clients there are. Maybe we could have five people in this game. Okay, so there's clients. So we'll define that as an empty list. And then we'll define our 
function to handle the incoming messages from the clients. So we'll have two inputs, WebSocket and Path, and have global clients. We want to be able to store that and have that persist within this function. And also our fastest time as well. And then we'll wait for the WebSocket to receive a message. And if the message is a buzz, okay, a press of the button, then we're going to get the time that that happened. We'll use the async IO get event loop time. And then we're going to append to this list, all right, with uh, the WebSocket and the response time. So we want to be able to get the time and store that. Okay, and if the length of the clients equals one, if it's the very first one that was added, then we're going to send that they were first place. So we're going to send that back to client one that they were first. All right, and then also record that our fastest time was that response time. Else, if they weren't the first, then we're going to record the time between the response time minus the fastest time. And that'll tell us how much uh, later they responded. So we'll just do to the hundreds of a second, so with two decimal places. And then we'll send that the response time was t seconds slower. So let's go ahead and start the WebSocket server. All right, and I'll start on that same port that we used before, 8765. It says WebSocket server started. And then I'll put in the await async IO future just so it runs forever when I run it. Okay, so there's our server. Now let's go ahead and design the client. So the client's going to use both of those packages as well. We also need to do import keyboard. So if you need to, just come here and do pip install keyboard. And that allows us to listen for uh, keyboard presses. All right, and then we'll start the WebSocket client with this uh, function. And we'll connect to the server and you need the port and the IP address. Okay, so I'm gonna put done equals false. I'm only gonna let them press it once. And so while not done, if keyboard is pressed space, so I'm just listening for a keyboard press, we'll send the buzz to the WebSocket server. And then we'll wait for a message to be returned because we wanna know if we're the first or how much further after the first we pressed it. All right, we'll print the message that came back and we'll say done equals true. So it doesn't continue this while loop, it finishes the program. All right, so let's go ahead and start our client. And that's all we need for the two. So let's go ahead and just start the server first of all. Okay, and this one is called this is buzzer okay server dot py okay so it says websocket server started and i'm just going to leave that right down here just so it stays out of the way and let me come up with uh, two clients now so one client And this one is going to be buzzer client. Okay, so now it's listening for the space bar. And let me go ahead and just start another client as well. Oh, I pressed the space bar. I, I did. Uh, okay, there it is. Uh, it was still listening for that. I, was, I pressed the space bar on the other one, uh, even though it wasn't. Um, in focus on that window uh, when I did CD space desktop it recorded that okay so that recorded the first place finisher I better hurry on this one uh, because I need Python buzzer client okay so I'm gonna start this and, and then if I press a space bar my response time was 32.53 seconds slower and I can run this again and hit the space bar 
and you can see the server is keeping track of you know how many clients it's actually storing each one each request that came in and recording how much slower it was than the very first one okay this client if they press it again for example um, it said it was 60.16 seconds slower all right so that's a very simple application with a couple clients you could have as many clients as you wanted you could have this running for example in javascript in node.js and send messages to this uh, program running in python and it would be able to return it over this tcp connection okay so i have all the source code here if you're interested in trying this out yourself um, there's a little bit of information about installing WebSockets as well. Just pip install that with the WebSocket server, the WebSocket client, and then this activity with show server solution, and then show client solution as well. All right, and I just mentioned a couple of these other transfer modes uh, with Modbus, very good for programmable logic controllers and it's a little bit older uh, communication protocol uh, limited in the types of uh, data that you can send you can send uh, one bit or 16 bits or concat you know, concatenate those together to 32 bit or 64 bit but other than that you're pretty much just sending numbers okay MQTT uh, this is has a broker and client architecture you can use WebSockets as the underlying layer to send the messages all right, so you'll see things like WebSocket MQTT, okay, and you see the type is WebSocket. All right, so it's using WebSockets as an underlying layer to send the messages to the clients and uh, the broker, so the subscribers or uh, you know those that are uh, publishing or subscribing to the broker. All right, and then you also have OPC UA, and this is an OPC universal architecture, and this is really built for process control and monitoring type applications where you might have a distributed control system or other type of um, network architecture where you have industrial controls, especially used there. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on WebSockets and uh, and some of the communications that you can perform with between computers.